Hi friends, and welcome to Our Weekly Craft, a place for ideas, inspiration, and fun for crafters. I'm Sarah White, Chief Maker at OurDailyCraft.com, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about New Year's resolutions related to crafting, um, as well as what I've been making and reading and watching, and hopefully inspire you to make some crafty related New Year's resolutions of your own and to make more in the new year. So let's dive right in. I know that when you're talking to knitters and crafters in general, that they like to know what you're wearing if you made it yourself. So let's just start there. Um, first, I have this little shawl on. It is called a Quaker Yarn Stretcher. It's by Susan Ashcroft. It's just a cute little asymmetrical triangle. Um, it's designed to use up as much yarn as you have. Um, and it's just simple little stockinette, reverse stockinette stripes. Um, I can't remember who made this yarn, but I don't think they're in business anymore. It came from an indie dyer, but I love it. Um, it's just a little squishy. Um, it's great for um, wearing in spring and summer too, because it's so small. You can wear it when you don't really need the extra warmth. Um, it's almost like a necklace in shawl form, which I love. And then this sweater is Ingenue by Wendy Bernard. It's from her book, Custom Knits. I love the little detail. Um, it's a really simple texture that's on the sleeves and the neck and at the bottom. Um, and otherwise it's just a really simple raglan, which I love, it's my favorite. Um, and this is sort of like a sweatshirt in knit form. It's so comfy. The yarn is knit picks. It is not one they make anymore, I don't think, but it's an alpaca silk and it's super soft and I just love it. So that is what I'm wearing today. Um, this year, like pretty much every year, I have the resolution goal, whatever you want to call it, to use more of my stash, whether that's the immense amounts of yarn that I have, the fabric, just craft supplies in general. Um, so I started out at the end of last year, beginning of this year with a couple of little stash busting projects, knowing that I was going to not be buying yarn for a while. I gave myself for Christmas, um, a grab bag that Lion Brand was doing. And in it was this little purpley pink yarn here, which is a homeland. It is Elmore city dance is the colorway. Um, and I got three skeins of that. So I was trying to find something that I could make with just those three skeins. And I came across the knitted sweater vest by Winnipa Yunker. Um, her website is Knit Crow Addict. And um, it's just a little cropped, simple stockinette, really fast to knit. It probably just took, you know, a few hours over a couple of days to knit this. Um, I did make it just a couple rows longer, but it's still cropped. And I still ran out of yarn, even though it's a really small project. So I got to go and do a little stash diving and I picked out this purple, the darker purple, I think is a um, Lion Brand, uh, thick and quick chunky. And then the sort of magenta color was just some random worsted weight in my stash. Um, I like the combination of the two because it sort of evokes the kind of marled look of the original yarn. And I got to use every last bit of this yarn and a little bit of some stash. I like that I used, I just did a, a crocheted edge instead of ribbing on the edges, um, which allowed me to use just a little bit more of that yarn and tie it in to the rest of the garment. So I really like that. But then I had a lot of these two yarns left over and since I already had them out and I had size needles appropriate for working those two together, um, I went looking for another pattern that I could use some more of that yarn with. So I came across um, the Itasca Beanie by Katie Stolhammer, um, which is this. It's a really simple textured, I think it was like a four round repeat that you repeat three or four times, four or five times is super fast. This one really did just take a couple of hours to knit. It's a little snug, like it's maybe more of a teenager size. Let's see if I can put it on real fast. So it's not bad. It's a little snug, um, more so than I normally would do for a hat, but I like it. And it would, my daughter, I'm sure would like it too. And it would fit her maybe a little better. She's 12. Um, 
and then, then I added a pom-pom because again, still using the yarn. So I also wanted to share what I'm working on right now, which is actually several things because who works on one project at a time until they're done? Monsters. So this is the beginning of Achu um, by Diyuki Shock Mulligan. And I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. I have no idea. Um, but it's this cute little Henley. It's kind of hard to see because the edges are folding in, but you put buttons on the side and then you can button it up or leave it open like that. Um, it has this really interesting sleeve construction because of the Henley. So you start at the top and you do short rows across the back, but it has almost like a, like a saddle shoulder into the sleeves. So um, this top yarn, I'm not 100% certain where it came from, um, but it was in my stash. I think it might be a Lady Dye Yarns, but I'm not 100% sure on that one. Um, and then I used all of that, and then um, the rest of the body and the sleeves will be done in this gray, which is a Lion Brand Comfy Cotton Blend, which I had never used before. This was in that... Um, grab bag that I had as well. And I really like it. It's a 50-50 a cotton acrylic, lightweight. Um, there's 392 yards in a ball, which is really nice. And I got three of these as well. So that was pretty much enough to do the whole sweater. Um, but the original pattern for Achu uses a speckled yarn at the top, and then you go into a solid at the bottom. So I thought that would be fun to do. And there's a little bit of gray in this. I don't know if you can see it, but it's just, there's just a little bit. Also, this is fun on the back. It has this broken rib pattern for the first part of the back, which just makes it a little more fun um, to do and to wear. So that is the main thing that I'm working on right now. Um, I also have some leggings that I'm working on, um, which I'll show you when they're a little closer to done and a crochet project that I will talk about in just a minute. I've been doing a fair bit of craft related reading this year. And so I wanted to share what I've been reading in case you would like to check them out as well. Um, the first book was Knitting for Radical Self-Care by Brandy Cheyenne Harper. And I read this in the ebook, so I don't have it to show you, but it's a really great book. I'll link it below. Um, it talks about knitting as self-care and like the real sense of self-care and not like internet listicles that tell you to take a bubble bath or whatever, but it's like really a healing way of, you know, allowing you to accept yourself and building your community and connecting with ancestors and all of this beautiful stuff that knitting can bring us. It also includes patterns and they're mostly chunky yarn, but with really interesting lines and details. She's really into like the shaping is emphasized and it's just really cool stuff. And I think that it's a really important message for all of us right now that knitting is more than just making the thing, it's the process is really important and valuable for us and for ourselves and making that connection with ourselves that we all need so much right now. Um, I also have been looking at this um, crochet book called The New Crochet. It's by Mary and Medell. And this is what I was saying that I have a crochet project that I will be showing you at some point in the future um, because I started a project from this book and then ripped it out and so I only have a row so it's not that interesting but this book is fun because it includes all the basics and like what you need and how to read charts and things like that and the basics of the stitches in chart graphic form um it's got good step-by-step -step photos this is you doing a crochet chain to make a necklace um but each project is a lesson. So like here, you're learning how to do slip stitch and it makes this little pouch um, and things like that. So you, as you go through the book, you learn new skills and you make projects with those skills. So the one that I was starting is this one, which is a treble crochet shawl poncho. I think it, she calls it a poncho, but it's like um, three pieces where you, I'll show you the schematic here. So it's a little hard to explain. 
but you work these three rectangles and sew them together. And so then the shawl part, you wear it with the long sides down. So it's sort of more like a shawl than a poncho, but you can also um, sew the sleeves together to make it more poncho-like if you want to. So I don't consider myself very skilled when it comes to crochet, which is why I had to rip the whole project out after doing it because I was um, increasing on the sides not appropriately. Um, I also like this bag as an aside. Um, but I want to learn more crochet and I want to feel more confident with my crochet. So that's part of why I picked up this book because it has all the lessons and all the different types of crochet that you might want to do. Um, you know, it's about working on the ground and making all the flowers. Um, it also has the charts so you can practice reading charts, um, which is something I don't know how to do at all. So, and it's just a really pretty book. It's a little bohemian in its style. Like there's these crochet flowers and things, but it's lots of really simple, nice designs that, you know, will teach you what you want to know about crochet and allow you to make some cute stuff along the way. So um, that's another project that I'm working on with Stash and I'll show that to you soon when I have a little more of it done. I meant to mention when I was telling you about the Achu that um, this is a project that I have wanted to knit for a really long time. Like it came out in 2017 and I bought it right away and it's been in my Ravelry queue all this time and I've never even tried to make it mostly because it's a lightweight sweater and I don't have a lot of sweater quantities of lightweight yarn and so I just haven't dealt with it so it was kind of serendipitous that I got this yarn um right at the time when I was starting to think about goals for the new year um because one of my other goals aside from just using my stash which is a perpetual goal as I mentioned is that um I want to do some of those kind of knitting bucket list projects that have been in my queue or on my mind for years, but have never actually gotten done. So this is one of those kinds of projects. You know, there are some other old school, you know, <laughs> show me you've been around the knitting internet for a while kind of projects, um, you know, like, um, like the Central Park hoodie, um, you know, things like that, that, um, have just been projects that I wanted to do a long time ago, but never um, have taken the time to do them. And so in general, it's just like being more mindful about both the yarn that I'm using and the projects that I'm making and, um, you know, making sure that they're combining in ways that I'm happy with and that are projects that I really want to make, which doesn't sound like an earth shattering revelation, but when you're a designer and you do work for other people, you're not always, you know, picking the projects that you want to make most at that particular moment. And while I'm sure I'll still be doing some designing this year, um, I want to focus more on doing things um, because they're things that I actually want to make and not because I'm getting paid for them. So it's like a different balance than what I had, especially last year. I was really busy with a lot of design work for other people, which is fun in a way, but there are just things that I want to make for myself. And so I'm glad to be like consciously taking the opportunity to do them. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is just, um, since we talked about books, um, talking about some shows that I'm watching, um, you know, um, it was before Christmas, but I really enjoyed Get Back. If you haven't watched that already, if you have Disney, um, is it Disney or is it Apple? No, it's Disney. Um, anyway, if you have, um, access to that, it's, um, even if you don't really like the Beatles, like I grew up listening to the Beatles, but I didn't know a lot of the stories. Um, and so that was really interesting for me, but I also feel like it was just really, um, had some lessons for creativity in the process of, you know, like how it's really boring sometimes and, you know, the collaboration between people that can happen and make things better and all of that. And so I actually wrote a blog post about that that I will link below as well. Um, if you need a little bit extra creative boost, um, 
you can read that and see the lessons that I learned from that and maybe don't watch the whole eight hours if you're not that into the Beatles. The last um, episode is really interesting and shows the concert, which is fun. Um, if you don't want to watch the whole thing, um, you can still get something out of it from just watching a little bit. Um, I'm also almost done watching The Chair, which I know came out a while ago on Netflix. Um, it's a short six episode little series um, about an English department at a made up Ivy League college and I've been enjoying that. Um, so yeah, um, I'd love to hear what you're reading, watching, listening to, um, because we all need more stuff to craft to, right? Um, and also since this is the first episode, I just wanted to, you know, shout out, thank you for watching. And I would love to hear your ideas for what content I should share in the future. You know, I will probably stick to you know, what I'm wearing, what I'm knitting or making. It's not always knitting, obviously. Um, you know, what I'm reading and listening to and, um, you know, but if there's technique tutorials, if you want to see interviews, more in-depth book reviews for crafty books, um, any of that kind of stuff, I'm open to suggestions and ideas and would love to share um, the creative journey with you. And I hope that you have a crafty week and we'll see you back here next week for another edition of our weekly craft.